And the Pharisees are so upset by this, they say, this man cannot be from God. Watch, because he healed on the wrong day. (laughs) This revival can't be from God because it's got manifestations that I'm uncomfortable with. This move can't be from God because he's saving people I, I never would have. No, no, this, this thing can't be genuine or true because it offends part of my flesh that needs to control both the process and the outcomes in order to feel like it is genuine. Can I tell you, God will send revival with the express purpose of breaking the need for you to control everything off of your life just to prove that you're not the center of the universe he is. That, that's why I love Baptism Sunday because it's so disruptive. Like in the Kirkland service, 11 a.m., you know, we're supposed to baptize 20 or 30. 75 end up being baptized. Service is blown up. We're not following any order of service. We get to the preaching late. Everything's a mess. There's water everywhere. People are sitting soaking wet in their clothes all across the room. And I'm like, ah, this is church, you know. And, and sometimes I can tell. Sometimes I can tell. Because you can always feel when that religious spirit starts to get offended. Because that religious spirit starts to get offended. People do this. Well, oh my, and I just, you know, in my day, I would have just, you know, never, uh, can't believe, and I just, you know, oh man, and I just, I can't Bob, he wearing a hat in church, and there's people getting baptized, and he just made them, they're just going to let them jump in the tank and dunk them, and, I, and they're going to sit in wet clothes and walk around and look crazy, and I just, I just can't, I just can't, this is just not the way I would have done things. What really grieves the heart of the religious is they're watching other people receive things that they've longed for. And instead of just saying, I'm disappointed, let me press into God for myself. They try to kill the thing that God desires to birth. When God sent revival, he don't care about your preferred program, how it ran in the last generation. What people you're comfortable with God saving or God reaching. Got to just mess it all up just to prove his ways are not your ways and his thoughts are high above. Now hear me, friend. Herein lies the problem of religion. The Pharisees cannot compute how a blind man could receive sight because the healing took place in a way that violated their understanding of the Old Testament law. See, an observant Jew is not supposed to work on the Sabbath because it would violate one of the original Ten Commandments. But Jesus would tell the Pharisees, you can follow the letter of the law, but if you miss out on the intent of the law, then you've missed the entire point of what the law was attempting to accomplish. Instead of celebrating that a blind man can now see, the religious crowd must dissect and deconstruct the process of how the miracle unfolded to determine whether or not it was a genuine act of God. And nothing takes me off more than this. In today's world, this looks like a group of millennials who don't even attend church anymore, who instead of going to therapy, start a podcast so they can hold a magnifying glass up to someone else's ministry and demand accountability and answers for things that they disagree with. And you might think that you're just being intellectual when you allow your questions to turn into complaints against the Almighty. But I'm telling you, it's the same playbook that the Pharisees used 2,000 years ago. Well, I just, I, I just, I have a discernment ministry. I just, you know, well, I, I went to a year of online Bible college. I really know my stuff and. And well, you know, I, I read a book and they said this was strange fire and this didn't happen in the church and this is demonic. And when I read First Corinthians once when I was half buzzed on a white claw and I've got an opinion on how speaking in tongues works and, 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 and I just don't get it. And what if they, fa- I think that they might be faking it. I, I don't know if that's real. I don't know if that's true. They got slain in the spirit and I don't know where you see that or where you read that and, and that just can't be real. And that's just emotionalism and hype. Yeah, yeah, but you come into church for the last 30 years and you've been faking your whole entire life. So now you want to accuse 
somebody else of actually what you're most guilty of. And here's the problem. What Pharisees do is they project their own sin and shortcomings on the lives of other people that they think that they can take advantage of. With the woman caught in the act of adultery, let's stone her. Well, let's stone her because y'all are committing adultery yourself. Oh, look at the man born blind. He was healed on the Sabbath. This can't be from God because you've been violating God's laws from the very beginning. And here's the reality. The religious spirit always seeks to kill what it can't control. And that's why the spirit of religion and the spirit of suicide are the same spirit. They're both trying to kill what God loves. You got to get it tonight. If all I do for the next 30 years in this city is crucify the spirit of religion, it's well done, good and faithful servant. I appreciate people being accountable. And I think there is weird stuff and wonky stuff. And when stuff's wrong, we ought to call it out and all these types of things. But you do not have a ministry of calling out other ministers that you don't have no relationship with. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know what they've labored for. You don't know their family. You don't know their kids' names. You don't know them. And I would say you better keep their names out of your mouth before judgment from the Almighty comes upon your head. They don't want to hear it, but it's true. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been born blind and received his sight. Watch, watch. Until they called the parents of him who received his sight. Because guess what? When a boy who'd been born blind grows into a man who is still blind, when he receives his sight... Is not just the man who rejoices. It's his parents as well. Was it his sin or was it his parents' sin? They've lived under the same shame of having a disabled child. They've lived under the same mockery and the same comments from people in their community. And when a son gets set free, there's joy that comes to mom and dad. And so 